So, Paul, first things first, you know, how are you and, and how have you found this whole, this whole summer not having a club? Yeah, I'm good. I'm uh, trying to stay as positive as possible. Um, it's been difficult, obviously. You feel like you lose your, your identity a little bit in purpose. And, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to keep myself as fit as possible. Training most days, obviously, have the odd Sunday off to spend with the family. Um, but yeah, keeping myself fit and ready for, for whenever an opportunity arises. Yeah, and you, you don't need to go into specifics, but have you, have you been close to signing for other clubs? Has it just not materialised for, for whatever reason? Yeah, there's been, there's been a, a couple of options there. There's, um, there's been a couple of things from abroad, but having a young family, you have to sort of make the, make the decision whether it's right or wrong for us as a family. Um, I've trained with a couple of, of teams, but unfortunately with with the way the sort of pandemic's gone and, and with the fans not being able to to come into the stadiums, it's um, it's probably created a little bit of a um, sort of smaller budgets for clubs, which they're then trying to keep smaller squads and they've got a lot of their business done early doors and kind of, you sort of, sounds bad, but you're hoping on injuries here and there. That gives me an opportunity to go in because I'm fit and ready to go. I can say... <laughs> Is it hard knowing that you're fit, you're ready to go and you haven't had that opportunity yet? Is, is it hard to keep yourself motivated or, or do you just have to keep telling yourself the opportunity will come up eventually? I think that's probably the hardest thing if you look at what I did last year where Northampton were right down at the bottom of the table and I went in and I don't think we lost in something like 18, 19 games um, and I feel like a lot of that was to do with myself. I went in, really helped the team and um, we managed to go and get promoted in the playoffs and, and I achieved a, a lifetime goal of playing at Wembley. So um, I finished that season where I'm as fit, fit as a fiddle. Um, I'm right up there at the front of the running with all the young lads that are coming through. Um, and yeah, and because my body's not telling me that it's the end, um, yeah, there's a little bit of frustration with that. But then I'm, I'm also keeping myself positive. I know what I can give. Um, there's a reason why I've played in, at the levels I've played at um, for all the years. And uh, yeah, um, like I said, when, when the right opportunity comes for me, um, I'll, be, I'll be ready and raring to go for whoever that may be. It's interesting you mentioned Northampton there. You had that high of, of being at Wembley. What's it been like going from that massive high to you know, looking for a new club? Well, it is. And it, you, you play at Wembley on whichever day it was and uh, two days after you sort of have the have the conversation with the manager and, and between us, it was probably not right for me to continue there. And um, so you go from the elation of playing at Wembley, winning at Wembley, getting promoted, to two days later actually not having a job, um, which is people would class as a low. And yeah, it was frustrating again. And um, I would have liked to have continued my journey at a, a club because I've got a great relationship with all the, um, all the staff and everyone at that club. Um, but that's the way football is. And, it chops and changes every season, and um, and yeah, it's a, it's a shame that I'm in the position I'm at right now. But like I say, I'm keeping myself fit. I'm ready to go, um, and I think someone will be lucky to get me when they get me. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned that Northampton there. But you've also you've played in playoff semi-finals for, for Ipswich and, and stuff like that. That the goal against Norwich is one that stands out for Ipswich fans in particular. Just just talk us through your memories of that day and why that was so special. I think um, I'd actually had a very good season at Ipswich and I think I've played seven years in the Championship and been involved in three playoffs. So again, I think that speaks of what I can actually do as a, as a team player. Um, and to score in a local derby in the playoff semi-final and it was... I hadn't played for a couple of games before I found myself out of the team and then unfortunately Luke Varney got injured and... I came on it just fell right for me and the, the, it's one of those days that I'll never forget just because I've got great relationship with Ipswich as a club with all the staff and with the fans as well and um, and yeah the, the the noise and the feeling that that goal gave me unfortunately it never came to anything but at the time when we'd done it it gave us a chance to really push on and we genuinely thought especially after the first half of the second leg we thought we were going to go on and do it and Unfortunately, things just didn't go our way that day. Yeah, when you've had moments like that and feelings like that, you must be so desperate to get back in and experience it again. Yeah, and again, with the right opportunity, I'm really looking forward to, to getting back in and playing. I've got so much to offer. I'm as fit as a fiddle. I'm, I'm probably a better player, all-round player now than I was 
when I was playing in the championship and which is strange to see that I haven't got a club um, but I genuinely believe I'm better than what I was and um, yeah with the experience and the drive that I can give to a team um, yeah it, it, it'll be it'll come it'll come and, and again when the right option is there um, hopefully hopefully something will be, be yeah. there. As you mentioned earlier, you have had negotiations with other clubs. What, have you noticed anything different this summer in how they're negotiating with you? Are they saying, look, we haven't got the money? Um, the, the salary cap's obviously been introduced this year. Have you noticed a change? Uh, there has been a big change at the lower levels. Um, and you even sort of look at uh, non-league clubs and things like that. They're, they're just much the same. I think if you go below sort of the conference now with this second lockdown, um, they're not even able to play um, at a lot of the levels, so they're not able to pay their players. So they have to be careful with the sort of options that they're handing out as well. But sort of with League One, League Two, um, I think it's something between 40 and 60 percent of their budgets come from match day revenue. Um, so that's going to make take a massive hit on their budgets. Um, so yeah, you, you have seen it. I don't think negotiations have really changed. Clubs will always do what they think is right for them and players will always try and get what they think is right for them. Um, but I think it has been more a conversation where you speak to a manager or you speak to a staff member at a team and it will literally be, unfortunately, w we can't do anything right now because of the budget. So, so yeah, it's definitely been a little bit of a change. We've seen you training here today, but what else have you been doing outside of football to keep yourself busy? Um, so I'm, I'm on my UEFA B coaching, uh, coaching badge at the minute, which um, it's something I'm looking to get into past my, my football. Um, I'd, I've got a real interest in working in coaching and especially sort of helping the youth come through. I want to give, give a bit of my knowledge and experience back to the game. Um, but again, unfortunately, um, with, the, with the way that COVID has affected everything, that the, the course has been, been affected as well. So. I've been doing been doing that, and I've been looking at setting up my own sort of um, coaching coaching school. Um, again, it's doing something in my local area to try and give back to the to the kids of the local areas. And then in the meantime, I've been been working with a friend of mine and my dad who have got a fencing business. Um, so just to keep me keep me out, keep me sane, um, go and do a little bit of work with them. And um, it's it's physically it's physically draining, quite hard work. So I'm using that as a bit of training and also giving them a helping hand when they're when they're having to dig holes and put fences up uh, around fields yeah and, and keeping your mind occupied you, you mentioned the mental thing is that is that really important at a time like this? Uh, I think for me because I'm fortunate that I'm naturally fit even though I'm working hard every single day to make sure I'm I'm ready for when that opportunity comes but I think mentally it's probably more draining just because you're waiting for a text message or a phone call from your agent or from a manager who you've spoke to um, and they say oh well something might pop up in a couple of days so it's one day there might be something then the next day there's not and then the following week it's the same thing so it's a bit of a roller coaster that you think oh well there's an option here for me and then they close the door on you and then there's another option um, so yeah so I think mentally it's a bit of a roller coaster um, but I'm fortunate that I've got really good family around me and, and um, good friends as well um, so if there's ever a day where you're not feeling as positive as you, you're trying to be, there's always someone there to, to pick me up. So I'm very lucky that I've got people around me like that. Yeah. And financially, are you in a good place? You've had a good career. Have you, you got enough stored away? It's not a case of you're going to have to give it up, is it? Or... No. It, and look, it's, it's one of those that I do have a family. I've got a wife and two kids who I do have to support. So, um, so at some point I'm going to have to make a decision. but. I'd like to think I've been relatively clever with my with my money over the years. I have got investments, and um, which is keeping me going at this moment in time. And like I say, it's it's unfortunate that it's gave me the opportunity to not be in a job for a certain amount of time, where other people who are just coming into their careers might not be quite as fortunate as me, and they might have to go and do a job that they don't necessarily want to do. Um, so I'm fortunate that I, I have got savings behind me, um, but again, at some point, I'm 32, um, I'm, I'm getting ready for life after football, I'm trying to prepare myself ready for things post-football because it's not going to be here forever. Um, it's just a shame that it, it feels like it's sort of getting to that, 
that time where I'm going to have to start working towards something else. And I don't want to give football up at this moment in time. So I'll, I'll keep working, I'll keep positive, And when the right thing comes up, I'll, I'll take that chance and uh, I can go and pro prove a few people wrong. Yeah, and, and finally, if there, if there are managers watching and, and, you know, and, and recruitment teams, what would you say, what, what are your, your assets and what could you bring to a club? I just think I'm, I'm an extremely good team player. Any team that I've, I've been in, um, generally the, the, percent, the win percentage is higher when I'm in the team than not. Um, I think uh, I'm as fit as a fiddle. I always have been. I work extremely hard. I bring loads of experience with playoff wins, promotions, um, played at a high level. Um, and I'm positive in and around a dressing room. I think I bring a hell of a lot to a dressing room and especially now where budgets are smaller and squads are smaller and you see teams bringing youth team players through, they're the people that I really want to help and really want to uh, give a little bit back to and if, if it's coming to the end of my career over the next several years, of as much as my knowledge as I can give back to these young lads, like I'm, I'm desperate to give it. So. Um, so yeah, I'm, like I've said through it, I'm ready and rare and ready to go and I'm, I'm not far off match fitness anyway, so, so when it comes, I'll be ready.